What's up, folks? Welcome back to another episode of the Germany Personal Union United Nations Fully Accept Every Culture in Europe run. And uh, this is, in fact, going to be the final episode, guys. I am going to be calling it here. Now, there's a few things that I wanted to talk about as they have become apparent. And I need to peace out in order to do that kind of thing. So, yeah, we're actually going to call it, guys. This is not actually going to be a mission complete. But it did occur to me something which I'm going to show you now. Uh, when I was talking about the sort of spiritual victory of how things currently are. You know, I said that we could achieve it by um, just releasing each individual faction, that kind of thing. But I had a good idea. And it is this. Now, I would still have to integrate Ragusa, and in fact, I would have to integrate this dude as well, which I can't do for another six years, apparently, the Crimea, because of the prestige issue. But uh, we did, I feel more content, actually, guys, that due to my own sort of a discovery or thought process, which I'm about to demonstrate, with a regular client state like man, I can seize land. And by seizing land, we can take Scottish land to diminish the amount he has. Okay. Now we have a few options like to pay off his debt, placate rulers, uh, that kind of thing, let time go by. So we, we do really well on prestige, we could do that. But my thought process was diminishing the amount of development that he has, and then at that stage handing him Ireland, which will increase the likelihood that he will uh, accept the culture. So if we released a new subject, and did this kind of thing, we could get them to be much more uh, productive, if you will. So I thought I'd show you, show you guys that because I was kind of uh, meditating upon it. And with that in mind, I'm quite confident that we can achieve what we want to achieve without actually having so many subjects that we're, we're dying, basically, which makes me feel a little bit better. But um, I'm still going to be calling... The session, guys, I'm still going to be calling it just because at this stage, there's really not that much action going on. We've conquered each and every nation that is required to be conquered. All of Europe. And uh, yeah, there's going to be quite some tedious. Um, I'm fairly confident we can get Savoy up eventually. They do seem to get events and so on. And uh, yeah, but even that alone, just fighting wars and trying to get his prestige up, that alone is quite tedious so here i'm wondering now if he will accept irish you know there he has perfect and then i will go ahead and hand him the provinces back and of course when you hand provinces to dudes they uh they like you so we can see overall man is not too upset with us. There we go. So we kind of artificially lowered his development to increase the overall development that Irish was and pulled that off, whereas I'm not so sure we otherwise would have been able to do it. Last episode, we integrated Minsk. So let's, now that I'm at peace, have a little bit of a uh, dabble here. Um, I wanted to give this to Circassia. I thought if I'm going to give... These to Circassia, I might as well embolden him more, just for the lols. So we're just going to meddle around a little bit, guys, this episode. But I'm looking forward to uh, finally playing on the new patch, as I've been playing on the uh, outdated patch. And uh, I'm not going to lie, guys, I feel like I'm starting to fall behind a little bit. You know, I've been busy IRL. Uh, and I mean in regards to the understanding of the game. I wasn't aware that people can buy territory out in these regions. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I'm worried that there's other things. It, it, a new patch once again is going to come out, I believe, uh, fairly soon, which will probably interrupt my kind of uh, playthrough if I was to play anything. Okay, so yeah, I'm just feeling like I'm falling behind a little bit. All right, now. How, how would we do this? So, I'm thinking about maybe dividing this between two client states, you know? So let's, uh, let's release a client state. See how we could pull this off. Wait, what did that say? Ah, okay. Create a new client state. Here we go. And now, obviously, they have Karelian accepted now. So what I'm thinking is, rather than giving them, this is how we ought to have managed this stuff, right? Rather than giving them a significant amount of stuff, I'm just going to give them Novgorod. Now, I suggest, because this is more development, that he will accept this culture. Now, I think when you release a client state, they don't have many points, if any at all. So that is a, an issue. But I'm positive that he'll accept this, right? He should accept this. So then, what I would try to do is give him a larger amount of... Probably... I'd probably give him that to bridge the gap, and then I'd give him all of Razan. That's how I'd probably do it. Dude, I don't know if he would accept all of Razan there, though. Razan's too low, I think. Jeez. But even waiting around for him to get the points and accept is kind of lame. So, uh, I did have a couple other things that I'd, I'd like to talk about. If they will kind of, uh... Come to mind here. Dude, this is such a shame. I can't believe prestige is what's letting us down. I can't believe it. So one thing we could do is uh, state, because we integrated it all, we could state up some Ruthanian stuff, except that culture. How many do I have? I currently have one more acceptance slot. I was thinking about accepting Northern Transylvania because this is a sick area now. So my cult last culture would be Transylvanian, and we'd accept Northern Transylvania once we integrated Ragusa. That's what would ultimately happen. So my mission really is getting Savoy to be Empire government rank. That's that's really the major thing that I want to be doing right now, if I wasn't, uh, you know, going to call it. Which means going to war. We were kind of getting some prestige, kind of, question mark. Uh... Yeah, but uh, it has come to mind. What, the other thing that I wanted to mention is what did we learn this playthrough? We we learned that the personal unions genuinely can get full acceptance, which is not that significant in a normal circumstance. But it uh, is uh, the empire government rank is significant. So I think the tactic that we've employed in this playthrough is... Uh, is interesting. I think that it could be genuinely utilized. It's quite hilarious, in my opinion, how we've PU'd huge territory, fed them, called stuff up, given it to them, integrated them, released them. It's kind of a ridiculous schizophrenic game in that manner. Um, not exactly a practical thing. However, I think that this can be used uh, practically, the way that we have increased the likelihood of gaining personal unions, that kind of thing. Uh, and an example of that would be if you were playing, for example, an Asian who can't, cannot be you, and you wanted to do a one-tag or a world conquest or something to that effect. Well, I suppose not a one-tag, now I think about it, considering we're talking about personal unions. Um, and what you would do is forge a little subject and then throughout the mid game you would uh put the dynasty on them once you flip to catholic or something like that a, a different religion right 
and then you can artificially, even though they're small, you can spread your dynasty towards them. And uh, what's really interesting when you're genuinely trying hard about that dynamic, like you do it in an area. So, so there's a couple things that are interesting. Number one is it can be done to, for example, any culture group. So you could have a Catholic empire here in this kind of uh, Persian culture group, a, a Christian, I should say, empire here that is full accepted and Christian, etc. But again, they are in an empire. So when one of the limitations right now to kind of uh, world conquest and so on is uh, that territories give you a small amount of corruption. Now, when you have the entire freaking world territoried, it uh, the corruption becomes quite ridiculous. Uh, this is one of people's concerns right now. I, I personally haven't had that much hands-on experience due to the playstyle of uh, since the changes. But my point is that an empire government rank, Spain, for example, has the same amount of, well, I imagine roughly the same amount of states. In other words, tons of states. So this, in my opinion, is uh, interesting and, and is to an extent straight up viable and an interesting tactic to have a small subject in particular, in very interesting areas, right? The major things to consider is your uh, personal union cannot uh, have their trade spread to you, that kind of thing. So you would not, so when you're doing it, you would like it to be in an area, for example, non-trading company areas. That's quite smart right off the bat. Um, and then obviously culture groups are somewhat significant because you have to understand that if you're going to war back to back to back and so on and you are feeding them, you're giving them overextension and so on. If they have unaccepted cultures, you know, there's unrest to consider. So culture groups are sort of a less significant but interesting thing to consider. And then, of course, things like trade. Uh, if you are dividing up the world, you know, obviously there are circumstances like us right now where money is just not an issue. But uh, with that in mind, you probably don't want to have a, a state sitting on your toes, if you will, state treading on your toes. Um, so, yeah, there's plenty of examples. I think you guys understand what I'm saying, but this would be a perfect example. Uh, I don't believe any of this. Oh, well, I lied. There's a little bit of development inside of Beijing, but this you could set up a personal union like that, even though they're in Asia by forcing your religion on them. So you would obviously be expanding around and you just set up a, a little um, client of some kind, uh, a vessel of some kind, you know, and just feed them up a bit. And the intention is to put their dynasty, your dynasty on them if or when you become Christian. And then release them, the small little asset, but of course, because that's why you don't feed them like crazy, right? So that when you release them, if you have UPU them, which is dramatically increased because they are your dynasty, and they can, in some cases, have a weak claim. It's most often an average claim uh, when you release them and enforce your dynasty on them. Uh, anyway, you've increased likelihood of PUing this little asset, but of course, once you gain the PU, the intention is to feed them like any other subjects, except they will be very quite stable. They have the ability to become an empire government rank, allowing them to state up a ton of stuff for only one relation slot, right? And then, of course, just like we've demonstrated, you could feed them, um, I don't know one large culture group in particular on top of that, like Manchu or something like that. But uh, yeah, interesting. I don't think what we've learned here today is, uh, or today throughout these, I guess it's been months, uh, is completely trivial. I don't think it's completely trivial. Now, Novgorod's triggering me. Why are you not, or never is triggering me? Like, is this not going to work? You should, you should do it, dude. You should do it. Uh, yeah, but I think you guys see what I'm saying. I can definitely imagine not exploiting, but utilizing the, the tactic that I have kind of demonstrated here today in one way or another.
Uh, and that's that's about what I wanted to say. Actually, I I was hoping that this guy would be nice. I thought that we could uh, demonstrate a little bit my thought process, but I guess here we go. So I restored Armenia to its fourteen forty four borders, and uh, oh yes, of course Constantinople. Cool, which is Greek. Greece looking really nice. I like the Greek flat, like the color color scheme so often i've played as a greek but it hasn't been a greek it hasn't been greece it's been byzantium uh yeah so uh, i don't know i don't know man i don't know he's got four he should kind of accept it stupid game okay so how about i give him calm I mean, it's the majority of his his nation. He should do it. That bridges out to Belarusian, at least, anyway. So, I've also been noticing something to do with this guy's the states. Uh, it appears as though if you give a client territory that is within their own culture group they don't need to core it up a twice upon giving it to them so that's interesting uh, that's what i've gleaned from this i'm not sure that is exactly the case but i do find that interesting and uh either way guys uh, this is a little bit of a fail. This is frustrating, but I think you guys understand what I had in mind. And I wonder what our next idea would be. We have military points to spend. Um, so the things we're interested in is diplomatic relations. When I, when I look at policies, diplomatic relations, and I guess uh, cultural acceptance slots. I'd be taking defensive for the diplomatic relation. Because that's an issue that would uh, certainly help us out in the long run. I think... I just don't get this. I just don't get it. Can we build buildings for you? What's the deal? Look, I'll, I'll build... I'll build buildings for you to give you more money. I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so even this is... Di di <laughs> I'm stuttering for some reason. Even this is disappointing. Even this is disappointing. I mean, I wanted to end it off here, but at least uh, I somewhat showed it here with man, but I wanted to uh, show that this is um, a plausible approach to try to give him a minimal amount of, so that he would accept it. And then at this stage, I would give him all of Belarusian to increase the likelihood of him accepting that because it's it would be a large amount geographically and then what I would begin to do is claim or seize the land seize the land so it seize Novgorod for example and his high dev provinces in particular and then I'd give him another subject like Razan after claiming his land and then ultimately giving it back uh, so by using that method, we'd be able to, um, manipulate him more effectively, but he doesn't even accept Novgorod, so I don't know, guys, it's a little bit, it is frustrating dealing with this situation, uh, but as I've talked about in the previous session, we could get it done, there's no doubt we could get it done, it's just a matter of how sort of uggo it is, you, you, you know what I'm saying, how ugly it is, uh, yeah, but uh, I kind of had fun. We we learned some stuff. It was definitely d interesting. I've never played through a campaign like this before without the intention to really go crazy. But with that being said, we started off as a one-province miner. And 
that's pretty badass. We kind of did go crazy in a way. This is genuinely, you guys got to give it up with the Brittany, the PUs that we had. You know, we could have just done Kiev regardless of him being Empire government rank or not and feeding him. Like, that was pretty cool. Um, I enjoyed this one. I hope you guys did too. I don't know right now off the top of my head what it is that I'll be doing uh, next time. I um, really do wish to play Japan, honestly, guys. I wish to play some kind of Japanese game, but the thing is, I know some people might be like, yeah, do Japan. Uh, it's it's about what exactly I, I would do, though, you know? It, that's, that's the E4 right now in general, is what exactly would I do? Something that would be uh, fun. I would ultimately like to, like, one tag the world, uh, excuse me, one culture the world eventually, like, before I was ever to retire from EU4 or something like that. That's something I would like to do, but boy, does that seem damn near impossible currently, the way that things are currently. Uh... It's surprising that he doesn't accept this. Who knows what the AI thinks? Maybe he thinks he's behind? Let's have a look. Yeah. So that might be one of the things that's been... I should be taking into account, guys. Is that he's at tech 27. And we checked that it was negative 10 cost. Maybe he prioritizes using his diplo points on taking up first to 28. So he'll spend his diplo points in that regard. Uh, damn it, it's a shame. I tried quite hard to have pretty borders and so on, guys. Mm, the Crimea's prestige is bumped. <gasps> Yay! What is that? Well, there's that. It's a boy. Empire government rank full. Italian culture. Check. Feels good, man. Cool. Feels good, man. There we go. Three PUs. In fact, all of Western Europe. When including my client state and my own territory. All of Western Europe. Cha-ching. Awesome. Well, that's pretty uh, cool. It was not all in vain, eh, guys? Uh, Savoy pulled it off, so both of them got a bit of a bump in prestige, eh? Uh, geez, man, if we could just get the Crimea. <laughs> if we could just try to farm. The thing is, now that his prestige is not so dismal, if he wins battles... He, he will win battles more easily, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, he is kind of on the forefront to where if I put everybody on supportive, like this, we could try to roll around with his troops. Does he only have one stack? It seems that way. He doesn't have many troops. Uh... Yeah, either way, that that is a positive note, but uh, like I said, I think this is totally doable and achievable. It's just right now, I can't really be bothered playing on for as long as it is going to take. Do you feel me, lads? Of course, all of Northern Europe achieved as well, and a lot of Eastern Europe here. Um, it's basically the Balkans, typical. The Balkans are not unified. And, uh, yeah... The Tartar land, and to a lesser extent the Russian land. I'm sure we could pull the Russian land off, but it's it's about those slots. So one thing I could do, for example, is just accept Ruthenian or Belarusian. Well, what about Kurland? Huh. Let's mess around here. I'm trying to kind of call the thing, but okay, before we end this up, Let's take a high dev province. Mm -hmm. uh, where's it at? Seize land? Where's it at? Villainous. I don't have to see it. Am I blind? I can't seize that from. 
uh, Curland sees land. There it is. Okay, I think I was just blind, or I was in the wrong tab or something. Okay, so he's pissed at us now, is he? Okay, uh... Alright, that might be all we can take from him. Yep, that's all we can take from him. Shoot. Okay, that wasn't much. Now... I'm gonna give him all the Belarusian land. This is not gonna work. <laughs> It's not going to work, I can tell, but I'll try. So, here's the thing. If we give him this, Belarusian land, and he gets relations because we're handing him stuff, it's Rusanian. There we go. Then I can demand another province from him. Let's make it sure it's the highest dev one. That was 27. So I think it is one of these, like 19. I don't think we can... Well, that's his capital. I can't demand that. Yeah, it's going ha to have to be uh, Bruslau. Bruslor. Uh, Seize. Oh, it has to be fifty percent, of course, you dummy. Oh damn. Okay. Well, let's give him the rest of this stuff. Either way, maybe he'll be at fifty percent, but I doubt it. So just make sure it's Bel Belarusian. But I think you guys can see with time as well, because the modifiers go away. I think you can see how we have more influence than I might have uh initially thought. more control if you will I think that's all of Bell Russia oh one more Yeah, so obviously what I can do as time goes on is I can demand more and more land of culture that he's already accepted, like Lithuania, to diminish the size of his country. Do you see what I'm saying? So we'd be farming prestige, which we get quite well, to throw that at him. And uh, with the time, the modifier going down, the idea is that... Uh, look at that! He accepted Belarusian. Yeah, cool. And then we give it back. Cool. Wow. There we go. I feel a little bit more, uh... Yeah, like, this is a thing, right? So this is how we would do stuff, guys. This is how we would do stuff. It's all about those client states. Uh, but yeah, like I said, again, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not willing to do it. I'm just not willing to do it. I apologize for that. What I will do is state that up and uh, I don't have the diplo points but I would accept Ruthanian here to, to end it off and I'm confident I say I'm confident I'm uh, well I am I am I'm confident that we could give him if he doesn't accept Novgorodian I'd give him more until he does and then we'd give him all of the Muscovite land and demand some of Nov Novgorod back and he would accept Nov Muscovite as well, and then we'd hand him everything, Karelian, Novgorod, Muscovite. Uh, so basically, I guess, with Rizan, um, we could try to do some client, aid, uh, client state action after integrating Crimea, or we could try to give him Empire government rank, which means... Um, hmm, Rizan would be an, an, a problem. We could do uh, this except resign ourself. Another promoter culture here. So we actually have an another another culture that we can accept. Um, which means that we would for sure get it. We would for sure get it, right guys? Yeah, so the... the 
And of course we have the one more relation slot uh, coming down the line. Once we complete defensive ideas. Um, but yeah, on that note, uh, a couple of nice things happened this episode, yeah? Savoy becomes an empire. We've got three Western European empires here. That's pretty cool. Not including myself, of course. And uh, yeah, we right at the end here kind of made myself feel a little bit more optimistic with our control over client states. But we learned some valuable stuff and I enjoyed myself. But it's about time to call it, guys, because I'm not enjoying myself doing this day in and day out. And uh, where there's just, yeah, sort of aimless wars to fight and that kind of thing so on that note i mean let's just quickly run run over them all we've done all of iberia all of france all of the british isles the uk all of germany major all of west slavic all italian all hungarian or well, actually, right now, with the exception of Transylvania, we've done all the uh, Carpathian cultures. With the exception of Transylvanian. So this is the first fail. <clears throat> we've done all of the Baltic. Did I say Northern European? We've done all Northern European. We have done about half the Russians, and we know we could do pull the Russians off. We've done the Caucasians and the Caucasus region we've done the greeks the turks but we have partial acceptance in the balkans uh -uh. and we have partial acceptance in tasha uh -uh. but we've accepted uralic uh and i'm pretty optimistic with the amount of time remaining in the game we could get his prestige up as we could see it does bump around we've seen it go down and it does bump around due to events or something uh and uh, I think with this amount of time, we could just fight, fight, fight. It's definitely plausible. But either way, one thing you could do is begin integrating, and it will take a while. And you could cancel. If I was like, oh, we're going to get Empire Covenant Marine, I could cancel. Uh, but we just about pulled it off. I know I could pull it off. Can't be bothered. I enjoyed myself. I'm looking forward to uh, future e exploits. Guys, give me some suggestions in chat if there's something in particular you'd like me to do. Uh, but that was fun while it lasted. And dang, have we come a long way, lads, from the uh, the one province mine of all. Like, dang. That was crazy. Get developed. Get developed. Yeah, size 51. Feels good, man. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in uh, the next series, whatever it is, or a unique video, which hopefully I'll be able to produce soon. See you then.